Judging from ever-present security camera and cell phone videos like this, it would be easy to conclude we're on the edge of societal collapse, a dystopian Mad Max world. In this case, the 68-year-old Brooklyn robbery victim suffered a broken nose and wrist. The perpetrator remains at large. A New York City detectives union said, these are New York City streets, what used to be the safest big city, sent back to the days of high crime due to failed laws that allowed no consequences and emboldened criminals. At least this victim survived. As of mid-June, a New York Times analysis found there were 200 murders in New York this year, a 13% increase over the same period two years ago. Shootings were up nearly 38%. It's happening across the country. A Times survey of 37 major cities found there has been an 18% increase in murders compared to the same time in 2020, and the 2020 murder rates were 25% higher than in 2019. In Washington, D.C., where carjacking and car theft is up 25%, a frustrated police chief lashed out after a recent brazen daylight shooting in a trendy downtown neighborhood. The real issue is we have a vicious cycle of bad actors who do things, no accountability, and they end up back in community. And the police officers, and I guarantee you, when we lock up whoever did this, they will be no stranger to us. I promise you that. He noted the recidivism rate among violent criminals in D.C. is 87%. Portland, Oregon, sees much the same. After more than a year of near-nightly Antifa rioting, perpetrators are often released after only a few hours in jail and return to inflict more mayhem night after night. Their allies in progressive media and politics often downplay the crime wave and its causes. In Mother Jones, writer Natalie Baptiste attributes, quote, skyrocketing numbers of new gun sales and COVID lockdowns. She cites Seattle's, quote, alarming rise of domestic violence 911 calls during stay-at-home orders. Indeed, the fear of COVID spreading through prison populations gave progressive politicians and prosecutors a rationale to release thousands of offenders from jails. This happened in Arkansas just last month. A woman with a rap sheet as long as your arm ran over a police officer and dragged him to his death. She should have been in jail awaiting her, her trial for more than half a dozen drug and other violent offenses. She wasn't. Why? Because of exaggerated fears about coronavirus. Cotton appears to suggest that those exaggerated fears of COVID may have been a pretense under which violent offenders were released anyway. In a National Review op-ed, he wrote, in recent years, radical left-wing lawyers, many supported by billionaire George Soros, have won elected office across America. They have become district attorneys and state attorneys in many major American cities. These so-called Soros prosecutors, or progressive prosecutors, have betrayed the public trust and made our communities less safe. Instead of fighting crime, they are abetting it. One example of a Soros-backed prosecutor, Kim Gardner, St. Louis, Missouri's circuit attorney. In January of this year, the examiner reported 262 people were murdered in St. Louis, five homicides shy from the all-time record in 1993, but still the highest in 50 years due to the city's smaller population. Gardner tried to prosecute this couple last summer for protecting their home with brandished firearms, but she did not prosecute an accused murderer, Brandon Campbell. On three separate occasions, prosecutors from Gardner's office failed to show for hearings in his case, forcing a judge to dismiss charges against Campbell, outraging the victim's family. Kim Gardner, it appears to me, could care less. I wish, and it would be my hope, that she would be fired immediately and not um, covered by the people who think that she represents the community in a, a positive way. Soros-funded prosecutors now wield power in New York, Los Angeles, Baltimore, Fairfax County, Virginia, and in Chicago, among many other cities. In Chicago this weekend, another 10 were murdered and 65 were shot, an average weekend in the Windy City. Those kinds of numbers have become so routine, it is easy to think that people become accustomed to them. But being victimized by violent crime is not that way. It leaves a lasting imprint on survivors, on families, and on communities. And it inspires voters of all colors and all political parties to seek change. The progressive politicians who have enacted such policies may be in for a rude awakening come the 2022 midterms. Doug McKelwing for The Washington Examiner.